Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing black holes. And to be more specific, the first black hole ever discovered, the first black hole to be ever confirmed. The black hole that you see right here, known as Cygnus X1. This is obviously not the real images, just a simulation of that black hole. But today the scientists are almost certain it's definitely there, and is actually the most well-studied black hole ever. Something the scientists have been studying for at least five decades. Here's one of many X-ray images taken by various observatories. And this black hole actually kind of became famous back in 1975, when the iconic Stephen Hawking and Kip Thorne, who you see on the left, decided to have a kind of a friendly bet, because they couldn't really agree on exactly what the scientists discovered. And originally, this object was identified back in 1964, during some of the earliest flights using what's known as sounding rockets. The rockets that usually are used, even today, for various types of relatively cheap research, using suborbital flight, where the rocket reaches really high altitudes, collects a lot of data, and then falls back to the planet, returning the data to be studied. And so in 1964, one of these flights used X-ray detectors, and found eight separate sources that nobody knew existed until then. And one of these sources was Cygnus X1, extremely strong, and by then completely unknown. And because of this, the scientists decided to launch an actual X-ray telescope, paving the way for the X-ray astronomy. This was Uhuru, launched in 1970. And so some of the initial observations from Uhuru established that this object was extremely powerful, but it was also emitting X-rays that varied quite a lot, with certain X-ray bursts only lasting for approximately 1 millisecond. And this implied to the scientists that this object must have been really small, mostly because of the speed of light. It basically means that the light in this case only had a chance to be created and to travel for around 1 milliseconds. If you do the calculations, it suggested that the object was maybe only about 300 kilometers in size. And back then, this was really unusual. This was kind of unexpected, and nobody really knew what this object was. And so these two wonderful astrophysicists made a bet. Kip Thorne said it was a black hole. Stephen Hawking said it probably wasn't. And by 1990, Stephen Hawking lost. Very thorough observations from Cygnus X1, along with multiple measurements, quite definitively determined that this object was meeting all of the expectations for a typical solar mass black hole. An object approximately 21.2 times the solar mass, and too small to be anything else, any kind of a normal star, or any other type of an object. With the size of the event horizon in this case being around 300 kilometers. But possibly even smaller than that. But naturally, because this object was also kind of far away, nearly 7,000 light years away from us, all of this took years and years of studies and years and years of investigations. But here's one of the better pictures we have of this object from Chandra X-ray Observatory, literally showing us what it sort of looks like in the X-rays. It does resemble a star, and a really, really bright star visible from 7,000 light years away. And the earlier questions here were, well, what's sort of creating these X-rays, and where is all of this energy coming from? And it actually did not take long to answer this, because the scientists also identified its partner. A supergiant variable star known as HDE 226868 that orbits approximately 0.2 astronomical units away from the black hole, or approximately 20% the distance of Earth to the Sun. But because this is a powerful star, it also produces quite a lot of stellar winds, which in the end ends up releasing huge amounts of matter that kind of accumulates around the black hole and creates the accretion disk. And this results in all of the energy we're detecting from the black hole. With the disk in this case very likely being in millions of degrees, which is basically why we're seeing X-rays and quite a lot of them as well. But there's also obviously relativistic jets coming from this object, arranged in a perpendicular formation to the disk itself, that very likely release things almost at the speed of light. Although in this case we don't really know as much about the jets and we don't really see them as well either. But nevertheless, because of all of these various features, this is also known as a microquasar, or basically something that seems to resemble a typical quasar, but in this case is just a tiny star that just seems to produce very similar features because of the black hole in the middle. But because this particular system seems to be also associated with a much larger region, the region we refer to as Cygnus OB3, in this case it becomes possible to determine the age of this particular system. It's probably around 5 million years old. But unlike a typical scenario that basically produces a black hole from some kind of a supernova, in this case because the partner star is still so close to the black hole, and also because this black hole is relatively massive, over 20 solar masses in total, today the assumption is that this black hole very likely formed as a result of what's known as a direct collapse. It didn't go through the supernova, the star just collapsed into the black hole directly. 
with the original star being approximately 40 solar masses or possibly a little bit bigger. Although a huge amount of this mass was probably also shed prior to this because the star was probably super super active and emitted huge amounts of matter over time. But now, after decades and decades of studies, the scientists discovered something else unusual about this system and something that nobody really expected. Something that was recently discovered by IXPE, Imaging X-ray Polarometry Explorer. A satellite that doesn't just measure the X-rays, it also is able to measure the polarization of light, or basically by how much the light is sort of turned and shifted, something that's usually produced by various magnetic fields. And so the scientists behind this recent paper that you can find in the description below, were able to directly measure the shape and the orientation of a lot of hot plasma located in the region, determining the positioning of the accretion disk and, of course, the jets as well. In the process of discovering that the X-rays were not really coming from the jets at all, from the accretion disk only, and specifically from the region approximately 2000 kilometers perpendicular to the jets, which we do believe is produced by the accretion disk itself. In other words, they were able to pinpoint exactly where most of the powerful X-rays are coming from, establishing a really important fact about black holes. It really looks like the accretion disk represents the most powerful part of any black hole. Most of the energy, most of the emissions, and of course the jets themselves, are all formed by the accretion disk from the matter that coalesces around a typical black hole or a neutron star. In this case, determining that the orientation of this disk to us was kind of similar to how you see it here almost edge on, about 4 degrees away from the edge. But the orientation of this particular accretion disk is very different from the orientation of the orbit of the star around the black hole. And that creates a bit of a problem because it's kind of difficult to explain how or why the disk suddenly became shifted so much and so dramatically, with one potential explanation once again being maybe a supernova? In other words, maybe there was a supernova here after all, which is what sort of shifted the rotation of the black hole, shifting the orientation of the disk in the process, making it spin differently from the orbital plane. More importantly, also establishing that the disk itself is kind of thin and is almost directly perpendicular to the jets, confirming that they do seem to depend on each other and it's very likely that the disk produces everything that we see. But these are also some of the most accurate observations of X-rays coming from nearby a black hole, which obviously will produce a lot of new results, testing various Einsteinian theories or possibly discovering something else about black holes we've never known before. And so these new extremely accurate observations from Cygnus X1 are very likely going to be producing even more papers in the next few months, helping us understand what happens around black holes, how accretion disks and jets are formed, and possibly answering more questions about these extreme, strange objects. But at the moment, we don't really know what's going to be discovered just yet. On that note, I'll make sure to follow this up with more videos in the future. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.